Welcome back everyone. In the previous video, we learned about how to create the context uh, using React's context API and how to pull the data out of the store and also store the authenticated uh, authentication token and the username into the context uh, store. And now in this video, we're going to just uh, change our class-based component into the functional-based component so that we can use the use context from React hooks to be able to pull that data from our global uh, context store. Okay, so you must be wondering well, why did we not uh, start from the functional component at the first place? Well, probably because it's uh, a tutorial. It is not really building, just building an application. So this is also going to teach you how to convert an existing class-based component into a functional-based component because there could be a possibility that you already midway through some project and you just want to implement some of the functionalities and you have written all of your project into a class-based component. In fact, most of them, not if not all. And then if you want to convert them into this new approach using React hooks uh, and use the functional-based component, this would teach you how to do that actually. Okay, awesome. So let's begin then. But uh, just to let you know, in going forwards, we'll just be con continuing with the functional-based component. This, that was just to show you. Awesome. So what we're going to do is we'll just go to, we'll start with our dashboard um layout so inside of the layout we have dashboard layout and as you can see currently all of the state is being managed through the um, uh, class-based component state and um, that's not very really useful because uh, we had an issue that we discussed last time that if you click on post if you click on add new this menu closes uh, back again because the component gets re-rendered when you go to a different route uh, so that's the whole reason we're using the react context api so that we can manage the state globally and just pull it wherever we need it. So we're going to convert this. So what we're going to do is first thing is convert this into a functional based component. All you have to do is just put const over here and just take this whole thing, put a, a equal to and then arrow function and just take this out return and remove the render and put that return because this is equivalent to render itself okay and a functional based component uh, then let's change a few things over here so for example now we don't need to manage state over here the state can be taken uh, or the data can be taken from the global context store itself we can and in fact we don't even need this function so we'll get rid of that and uh, we don't need all of this in fact we don't need to pass the state and the props etc uh, into our components let's clean it up because we're going to take all of the information and in from a global context store okay so you can see how clean this has become now and um, we don't have to worry about passing different things to multiple child components okay um, awesome so that's all we had to do to convert it into a functional based component you can see how simple it is now what we do is we go step by step so we go to sidebar menu and then clean this up okay okay so we have already pulled the store and the set store from the app context in the previous video we'll just continue with that and now we no longer need the sub menu active and and all of that stuff we don't need the username we can pull that from the store itself and let's get rid of this as well we don't need that okay now props.active is just want to check if the state is active so rather than doing that we can just say store and we can say sidebar active if it has a, if it has a value then just put that as active okay and this doesn't need to go to username because now we can pull the username from the store itself okay and that's that and next up is uh, let's just go down and check so we have a nav link so we have a nav link okay I think it'll be better if we can clean this up a little bit because there's so much of going on over here and like I said as your component gets larger you should break them into small pieces so if you see this is basically the posts uh, menus why don't we bro uh, break these down into different pieces so I'm gonna say 
So I'll go to sidebar and just create a directory called menus and this is where we keep all the menus. And since this is going to be a post menu, uh, let's just create a component called post menu. And I'm just going to move the entire logic over here. Okay. So I'm just going to say import react from react oops okay and uh, const post menu is equal to arrow function return and then Export default post menu. Okay, why is it saying like that? Oh. Okay, great. And then I'm going to move the entire logic that we have right here over there. Okay, that's great. And, um, yep. We don't need the get username, get rid of that. We don't need the use state, get rid of that as well. Okay, and similarly for the page menu as well. So for these pages, basically, we create another menu inside of the menus directory and we name it as page menu. Okay, I think it'll be better just to copy paste to save time. Let's do that. Page menu. Just change the name as page menu. Okay, and um, pages. Let me put pages over here. Right. And then we'll. I think we'll deal about deal with it. Okay, we had a sub menu as well. In fact, we need to copy this whole thing basically. This right here. Okay, let's get back. We had nav link here, like this. So we need to take this whole thing. Post menu. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. So and then just pull that component here. It's post menu that's it similarly we can do this for page menu as well just copy paste page menu okay all pages add new is fine pages we'll worry about the routes later i think uh for now this should be okay Great. Awesome. So now we're going to go into this post menu component and we're going to make changes over here. Basically pull the data from the store. Okay, next up is we just pull the store from the context. Set store is equal to like we did earlier. So use context. Context app context okay and then uh, this is going to go to dashboard posts dashboard posts and over here we also going to set this class name basis which page we are on so we're going to say if we are on the dashboard posts page so you already know that in JavaScript we have something called window dot location dot path name so if the path name is this which means we are on this page basically uh, then you put the class name as active so that we get that color that uh, the background color okay and then over here instead of saying sub menu active we just say store dot 
active menu dot post menu active so if you remember we had set up the store I'll just show that to you so we had app provider and we have this active menu so we check just checking if we have that value available here you must be wondering we haven't even said that so now we will we'll go ahead and set it over here okay so on click so when it is clicked let's get rid of this we're going to call the set store function and inside of the set store function we are going to first pull all of the data from the store we'll spread it so whatever is there in the store all of this data it's going to spread that and then change the value of the active menu so then we're going to say that um, active menu so now we are setting this this value currently this is empty okay so active menu so currently it's equal to empty object we're going to set the value to be post menu active so that will be the property name that will be the key and the value will be store dot active menu dot post menu active okay so the reverse of whatever the value is if the value is true then set that to false if it's false then set that to true 